the track at New Balance. I'm Chris Chavez, joined by Kyle Merber, and we're immediately joined by a special guest for After the Final Lap. I'm joined by the world record holder, the Olympic gold medalist, the world champion in the 400 meter hurdles, Sydney McLaughlin LeBron. What's it like being back here at New Balance Nationals? You used to compete here. This yeah, is where man. it all started. I thought that was going to be part of the intro. Yeah, yeah. Our New Balance Nationals <laughs> champ back in the day. Yeah. This is it. This is the place. Um, it's. I just want to correct. Oh, Lavroni. Okay. All right. Lavroni. It's it. the yeah. Italian in him. Yeah. Um, no, but this is like my favorite meet. This was every year. I always look forward to nationals. So being back and being able to just be at the fastest party in the planet is always a great time. So I love it here. What have you been doing? You've been in Boston now for a few days. I got in yesterday just for this. And I mean, when I showed up to the track, there was just energy. Lots of people screaming and running fast. So, I mean, I'm excited to be here today and tomorrow and just see what amazing times are run. So there's probably like a big population of track fans that have like become fans of yours yeah. from the recent years, maybe from 2016 onwards. But really before that, there was New Balance Nationals. But <laughs> take us all the way back to like, what got you into a sport that, you know, there's so many athletes here that yeah. are just hooked on it. And it, it comes from watching people like you back in the day. Both my parents ran track. Yeah. Uh, they put me and all my siblings in it young. And no choice. No choice. <laughs> I mean, we did have a choice. We had no choice about trying it, but we had a choice about choosing it. And I think it chose me, honestly. First race ever, I just felt so free and been doing it ever since. And nationals for me was just like everybody in the country coming together, competing against the best. It's just, it's so awesome. And being able to just see so many people from different places uh, doing the sport that they love is just fantastic. Was it a sibling thing, like that early rivalry you got <laughs> in the backyard or something? Or We were all naturally competitive, but we're all different in ages. So it just competing against, you know, older, si older siblings was always pushing me to be better. Um, but yeah, we always competed in everything we did, no matter what it was. Would you describe yourself in general <laughs> outside of the track as a competitive person? 1000%. Always. No anything. question. Doesn't matter what it is. What, what, what extent does this go to? Is it like yeah. games, of, like even board games, whatever it might be? Whatever it is. <laughs> even if we're walking somewhere, I'm going to walk faster. Like it doesn't matter what it is. That's I'm going East to Coaster. beat you. Yeah. And it's yeah. the East, right? Thank yeah. you. It's the East Coaster in me that just wants to beat you in whatever we're doing. I guess we can segue because I was going to ask about, you know, Jersey over West yeah. Coast now. What do you miss most about being back on the East Coast? Family, man. Yeah. Uh, me and my husband, we love LA. It's great for training and what we're trying to do right now in our lives, but I think long term it's just the connections of family and friends and you know those meaningful relationships that it's just hard to do when you're on the other side of the country, you know? Yeah, I mean Jersey girls, like Yeah. You gotta let people know out there how you operate a little bit differently. You know what? Right? I'm just trying to put Jersey on the map. I don't I care. We're small that. but we're <laughs> mighty. You know what I'm saying? And they may disrespect us. They disrespect us in like every rom com movie, but it's fine. I'm gonna continue to put respect on our name. Period. Right. Explain it to us about just like what has made New Jersey track and field like just like the hub for like the biggest stars. It's you, it's I the, think. It's yeah, it's, man. Uh, it's, the Ajay. Ajay, yeah. it's the pork roll. Yeah. It's the pork roll. Yeah. What side are you on? I am not picking a side. I love Jersey in its entirety. Are you central? Does that exist? I I always tell people I'm central, but people are like, you are not central. I'm not even gonna get into that debate either. I'm from Jersey. That's all that matters. <laughs> so Union Catholic, they're here. Yeah. I mean, when you were there, what was the team culture like? And it's leveled up over the years we're now just like being here winning titles it's become just a regular thing I think I got there at a great time where the women's team was really just figuring out who we were and the men who had already established themselves and I think from there we just built a culture of excellence and all we did um, and striving for that and I think that coach McCabe and his team have done a great job continuing that to this point and it's awesome to see them just so dominant and uh, recruiting people in that just take the the program to the next level Do you go back regularly or like have you been back yeah yeah, I've been, I've been back. I've seen the team a few times and just been able to see them and talk to them. Uh, hopefully I'm going to see them again today. And yeah, it's just cool to see how much has changed looking back. Like high school was, I don't even know how many years ago. Like it's so weird, but I, I love being able to just like 
talk to the younger athletes any way I can and help them. So, what, is there like a big poster of you like at the track? Is there like anything, or is, or is your just name in the record books? There is that? like a little case in, in right next to our library that has like the whole Rio year basically like mapped out, and it, it's a cool little um, memory for the school because that was like a whole school thing. You know, everyone was behind me supporting me in that just the first Olympics, and yeah, every time I go back, I always feel the love. I saw a video of you, it went viral, I think, like for the track went viral, of you long jumping. From a couple years ago, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to put any context on this one? Um, I long jumped when I was young and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, but when I got to high school, you know, I had to stick with the running events. I didn't have time to expand into the jumps as much because, you know, there's relays and open events and all that stuff. But one time my senior year, I was like, just let me long jump. I don't know what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. I love long jump. Bobby, I hope you're watching. And <laughs> they just were like, okay, go for it. I kind of like watched videos, okay, like you have to hold your legs out longer and just went for it. And honestly, I had so much fun. And you know, maybe in a, if the what, I don't know. Say it, you're coming, you're coming. For God willing, jumpers. Bobby, <laughs> you'll let me long jump one time. <laughs> you're not scared to try other events though. I feel like that's kind of in the theme now, the yeah. last year, especially during the indoor season. Yeah. This year we saw you try, you know, the 60. The 60. Yeah. We've seen you in the short hurdles. Um, I, the 800. What, are, yeah, are you asking for that? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just got to yeah. Whoa. And that's um, the end of the interview. No, but honestly, here's the thing. Not everyone's going to understand the journey. Uh, I saw some videos about people talking about my 60, which it is what it is. But at the end of the day, we understand why it all adds up. And you have to be able to go out there and get comfortable being uncomfortable in order to go back to your event and dominate. And I think, you know, when you go out there and try to run a crazy time no one's ever ran before it's going to be uncomfortable and being able to have that frame of mind of I'm gonna figure out how to make myself comfortable in this is necessary is it tough I guess during the indoor season to have to like swallow that ego and say I know this is good for me come yeah August. absolutely and you know like it's not always fun but I think it's worth it and it's a part of the process and honestly for me I felt like it's helped build my character as a not only an athlete but as a person and so I, I kind of love the challenge now of okay I don't know exactly how to do this I'm not made to do this but I'm gonna try my best in it and whatever happens I'm I know it's gonna work towards what we're trying to do how so. quick were you to buy into Bobby's plan because it's like his resume and the credentials yeah. and everything like speaks for itself but that first ever meeting that you had with him where you're like Hey, like, who was it? Can you remind me? I guess, like, did he approach you? Did you approach him? How did that all come together? Yeah, um, I approached him. Uh, I saw him on the track one day, and we, you know, we we sat down and had a meeting, and I just kind of expressed like my hopes and dreams and goals as an athlete, and uh, you know, he said that he could make those happen. And um, I think, you know, it always takes time to build that rapport with a coach and and that trust. But once I started seeing the results as time progressed, um, I just knew he knew what he was doing. And I think I haven't doubted him since that first year. And now we're just we're along for the ride. Is there an element of him having to figure you out as well? I think he did. The first year we were trying to figure each other out. Um, but once he realized, in many ways, I'm a lot like Jackie. It was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I've played this game before. I know how this goes. And uh, now we understand each other very well. You, as a student of the sport, do you ask him questions about just sort of like some of the his history and things in the past that he's done, maybe with like Allison, with, with Jackie, mm -hmm. just like for you and like what you can take from from those grades yeah absolutely uh, he's told he tells me stories all the time about things that happened how things played out why he did things why he didn't and it's just cool to have a coach who's been in those positions and has seen the results of that and can implement things that'll work for me now um, and I learn a lot about you know just his heydays and things he's done and it's cool to be a part of his, his history and his future. Now, you grew up running track at a young age. Were you a track fan? Did you have posters of athletes on your wall? Maybe yeah. actual posters, maybe you know, not. Why don't they have more track posters? Uh, we can talk okay. to you Can we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Um, I would have. But I absolutely loved the sport. I loved watching the Olympics. I loved watching them run. And I just I knew I wanted to hold that flag behind me one day and just represent our country well. Um, so yeah, I would say I was a huge fan of the sport and am to this day. Like I'm about to go watch NCAAs after this. <laughs> it's right over there. We have it on the side. Oh, there so you if go. Anything I'm crazy happens, gonna we'll look over, over occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you were talking about just like those conversations and how you expressed to Bobby some dreams that you still have, and yeah. it's kind of 
crazy because like you've accomplished so many of other people's dreams, right? As someday setting a world record or winning an Olympic gold medal. Like I don't necessarily need you to vocalize what some of these unfinished business and, and boxes you have to check, but yeah. it is, is it, is that a challenge for someone at your level to try and think of the next challenge and what you want to accomplish or is it just sort of like maintaining that greatness and elevating it? Well, I think it's important to know that no race I've ever run has been perfect. And so there's always something I could do better. Um, we don't even know what's actually really possible, you know, and I think we're starting as in this generation of athletes to kind of figure out, oh my gosh, we can break this barrier. We can get under this, you know, second or millisecond, whatever it is. Um, so for me, honestly, it's going out there and continuing to better myself give all the glory to God and just push myself to my limits until I can't anymore. Is there a race that still haunts you to this day? Not to bring up some tough, but like, is there a race where, or maybe it's not the, a complete haunting, but one moment in a race you're like, I think if I would have done that differently. Oh man. Yeah, the least mistakes, maybe that 1% that is like, oh, that would have been different. I mean, I, I, I often think back to Doha 2019 and just stuttering on that eighth hurdle. Um, you know, would it have made the difference? I don't know. But I think that's one of those things that encouraged me to want to work on my hurdling skills and work on my step pattern and all of those things. And, you know, if I could have gone back and changed it, I can't say that it would have made a difference. But it's one of those things I'll never know. And I'm just going to use that as motivation in the future to hopefully not do it again. So over the past, like, two months, it's kind of crazy. I've had the chance to sit down with Dalila and with Femka. Now I'm here with you, and I asked them each what happened to the 400 hurdles that has elevated this thing that you guys just totally changed the game. Yeah, man. And uh, Dalila told me, it was like, we turned it into a sprint. Yeah. And the splits it takes to get even into that first hurdle, you're just attacking it. Femka totally agreed with it. From your perspective, what what totally changed? Yeah. I think, yeah, I, th I, I can't disagree with that. I think we did take it to another level where you have to get out and you have to run it like it's an open four. And that's why the hurdling is so important because we are going to take it out and you're going to see, you know, how, how well you can hold on at the end. Um, and I think, you know, people are just getting more comfortable with their stride, their stride pattern and all those different things. And it's making it exciting. We're yeah. making the 400 hurdles exciting, which is really cool. Is there an element of like, you have to be turning it into a sprint in order to do the stride pattern that you're aiming for? Honestly, I think that depends on the athlete. You know, it depends on how tall you are, how long your natural stride is. Uh, it's different for everybody, but I just think in general, it's the mindset of I'm going to attack this race that has really, really changed uh, just the culture of the 400 hurdles. The open 400 though, that's the one that the fans are just itching. It's like, <laughs> when is Sydney gonna do it? Do we have an idea yet of like a plan so far for the season? You know, it's March. Yeah. I Still too early. One thing about Bobby is you take it one day at a time. <laughs> and so that's kind of my plan right now. And uh, we'll see how the season progresses because, you know, I mean, we do have a buy in the 400 hurdles. I don't know what we're going to do yet. Um, but I know that is something that people have talked about a lot. and So much. I yeah. haven't ran that in a few years, so I don't even know <laughs> what you, that would look like. Do but you go over hurdles at this point of the year super regularly or is that something that kind of helps in? Like you stay in touch. Yeah. Like what does that progression look like? I can't give you all my secrets now. Right, Y'all are asking oh, a little secrets. too many questions. Like <laughs> <laughs> a little too many questions. All right, this is holding yeah, off. I like it. No hurdles yet this entire year. All right, that's, all right. That's a rule we'll The photo that was posted, I think, the other day, you took it of the uh, the training group. Like the, it looked like the yes. Avengers. Yeah, what is <laughs> not the, the Avengers. <laughs> what is the culture of that team like? It's oh, got to be one of man. the most fun practices to attend. It's such a great group. We have such an awesome group just full of not only amazing athletes, but amazing people. And, you know, I, I can't tell you too much because our group is working on some stuff, but it's really cool to be a part of the culture and just uh, so many driven young people who are just trying to change the sport of track and field. What I love is just the fact it's like the best case scenario for us is to just like go out to the track you guys are practicing, practicing at and like watch from the fences or something like that. That's the only intel we'll be able to get. <laughs> I don't even know what we're looking for. The majority. Yeah, yeah, probably. So, all right, uh, jumping back, you know, thinking about 2019, but then also this past year, and did Austin look like a perfect race? But to you, it was, is it more difficult to go into the off season when you just nail it at the end of the year? Like, is it harder to get up? What do those, like, couple weeks of off season look like? Yeah. No, I think after a season like that, you just have to decompress. You let your body just relax, your mind relax, because there's a lot that's going on. You're thinking about the race. Could I have done this? Could I have done that? You know, and just 
you have to detach and then you come back and you refocus and then you start working back in. But I think a lot of athletes get burnout because they're so amped up to go back in immediately. And it's such a long season, you have to be patient. And I think for us, we do a great job of just taking those breaks and then getting back into it when we're ready to get back in. Do you have a hard time shutting off outside of practice? No. The second you're done with practice, yes. you're good. How do you do that? <laughs> Did you struggle with this? Oh, I was obsessed. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's great because I feel like my schedule, I'm, I have other things going on, so I can't just focus on track. You know, there's sometimes meetings or photo shoots or stuff with my husband. So it's easy to just shift my focus somewhere else. Um, but there are times where it's like you're thinking about a workout or a meet coming up, whatever it is. But I just, I have to remember that my life is not just track and field. And you know, I love spending time with my husband. I love going to church. I love reading my Bible, all those things that just help bring me back to the center of like, I'm not just an athlete, you know? And being able to detach is so healthy and so necessary. And you've got an acting career now, I guess after the Sports Center commercial. The reviews have been good on it. Thank you. Yeah. It took about 50 tries, but really? we got it. <laughs> well, what was going on? That wasn't your fault, right? No, no, no. They just need a lot of different takes. Sometimes yeah, they switch angles. up the lines, yeah. angles, all that stuff. It was so much fun, though. And I was just, like, so happy that track and field got a little spot. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool to kind of just immerse ourselves in that, that world a little bit. I like that. Yeah, I feel like you've done a really good job of starting to transcend beyond the sport. I mean... What is, is that stuff really fun for you? Or? It is. Yeah. It is. I feel there's a, a little sense of responsibility just to continue to push our sport forward. And I take full responsibility of that. And I want to be able to continue to do that. I think I could have done it more in my earlier years, but I'm, I'm taking responsibility for it now. And so these are cool opportunities that I need to leverage for sure. What's the thing that you want to do? It's like go to the Grammys or, you know, meet someone I, be in the movie. No, like, I tell people, I told my agent this in the car. I want one Barbie. I don't even need a line of Barbies. I want one Barbie that looks like me that I can give to my daughter one day. That's all I want. I That's it. I think I can make that happen. An Olympic, Olympic year. Sydney Barbie. Thank you. That's all I want. I think it's going to happen. Thank I, you. Have, yeah. yeah, now that you put it out there, <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah. We'll yeah. tag Barbie in it. Yeah. There we go. That's it. <laughs> all right, Sydney, final question before we let you go so you can watch some of NCAAs over here. But what are you most excited about in just this time of the sport that we're in right now? Yeah. We're coming off of Olympics or World Championships, World, Worlds this year. Yeah. Worlds the year after that. Olympics next year. Worlds the year after that. Like, there's no breaks. No, man. I, I From the athlete side, it looks like a lot. But I'm just excited about the momentum we're going to gain as a sport, especially heading into these next two Olympics. I think there's so much opportunity to grow the sport of track and field. And I think that's what excites me because we have so many amazing athletes doing so many crazy things right now. So What can fans do? If they're like, I love the sport, I want to see the sport grow. What, what, what do you do? How, how can everyone else help make yeah, that man. push towards, I guess, 2020? Honestly, if I'm being honest, I think it starts with us first. Yeah. Not just the athletes, but the federations. And from there, you know, we bring the fans along. So honestly, I think it starts at the top and it works its way down. So 2028 Olympics in LA, they better not introduce you as LA's own. It's always <laughs> New Jersey. Jersey's own living in LA. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, Sydney, I appreciate you taking the time for this. I'll let you get to watching some NCAAs and really taking in all the festivities here at New Bounce Nationals. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. Thanks, Sydney. We're going to stay on live and we're going to talk about the races, okay. but appreciate it. Bye. <laughs> Just kick Sydney out. It's, there's a 400 about to go on right now. All right. So, Kyle, I think we've, we've completed the trifecta of getting all the four, best 400 hurdlers to sit down with us and talk. We got Dalila, Femke, and now it's Sydney. It's pretty good uh, showing there, you know, a few medals amongst the bunch. All right, so what are you, what has been so, uh, the most exciting thing for you so far at New Balance Nationals today? Today it's been already record setting. Yeah, I mean, that 400 that we saw on the, the boys' side, you know, the freshman from Bullis. Quincy Wilson. Oh my he's, God. He's, he should be on his way over here soon. I think that was the highlight for me. I mean, the way that people just exploded in the crowd when he was coming off that turn was, it just, you know, they say it's the fastest party. Like, that was certainly it. I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, we get the Bullis head coach here as well when, when, he's, when he comes up because, I mean, that's a team that just 
piles on the trophies at a meet like this. And so learning a little bit more about you know, that team culture um, would be really cool. But what about you? Do you have a highlight so far? Today, it, it, I felt like the day just built and built and built. And then there was an unbelievable window there of track and field in which race after race was so exciting. Yeah, uh, the 5K was a little surprising to me. With Tyrone winning, uh, because all eyes were on Lex Young coming into it, and rightfully so. I mean, like he's someone who's like got the accolades, the fastest personal best on paper from his outdoor run, and uh, he's coming back from injury. And so, I mean, like you spoke to him, he seems to be still in pretty good spirits. That it was spirits that this is a building block towards the outdoor season. Yeah, he was definitely in good spirits, and you know, I think just looking at as a whole, in which. We have the national record, another 1359 athlete, a 14 flat. Like that depth is incredible. Fourth place, I believe, was 1412 in a junior. And so just seeing all the athletes coming together and being able to push themselves and not being afraid to just go from it, go for it from the gun. Yeah. So day two of New Balance Nationals. All right, let's bring on David. David, real quick, hit us with a little update of what's going on because the people all around us are freaking out. What's happened so far? Because this is New Balance Nationals, but there's uh, we've got uh, NCAAs going on at the same time. All right. We had a very exciting final of the Women's 400 up on the screen here moments ago. In that first heat, Adelake from Texas yeah. ran 50.45, time to beat. Talitha Diggs, Bryn Wilson going after it together in that second heat. Britton Wilson, 49-48, oh, wow. collegiate record, American, American record. record, would have been the world record three weeks ago if Bull hadn't broken it. Number two all-time indoors. Wow. Amazing. That's unbelievable. This is, you know, it's funny, we're, we're saying this, we're watching the athletes here at New Balance Nationals, and in a year or two, we're going to be watching them while watching New Balance Nationals, except for the instead of Lady. Well, we had the perfect case of that last night uh, when we were watching the Stanford DMR happening, and we were extra invested in it because Roisin Willis and Julia Whitaker, who were New Balance Nationals champions last year, uh, like were competing for Stanford in that one, and Julia Whitaker anchoring that race for Stanford ends up splitting. Four, uh, was it 38 or something like yeah, that? 438. But it was like altitude, uh, which was a bit challenging. Uh, and Lauren Gregory was coming at 431 uh, final mile split. So all impressive. But here we were going nuts in the suite just because it's sort of like we got the chance to know them uh, last over the past year. And so. Again, this meet is a preview for future champions, not just in the NCAA, as we just you sat down with uh, Sydney, uh, someone who goes on to win gold medals at the Olympics and world champions. You were, you were a little nervous before that interview. That went pretty well. I mean, yeah, she was great. <laughs> She's fantastic. I think you're a little nervous for our next interview. I don't even know who's coming on next. He's to your left. Oh, our boy! All right, we're gonna bring on Quincy. Actually, pull up another chair. We'll we'll get use four mics. You can you can uh, be our co-host on this one. Go co-host. As, as long as I can see the sixties. Uh, we're gonna have Quincy and Caitlin on. All right, we'll bring on Quincy. Quincy, the crown is still on your head. Congratulations. You got to hold the mic up pretty close. Okay. So, how's it feel, New Balance National Champion? Uh, it feels amazing. Um, coming to this meet was it had a lot of pressure, but not as much pressure as everybody else in my heat. I was the underdog coming in, and I knew that I had to uh, be patient and run my hardest. Finished. Now, yes, what sir. was that official time? 46? 46, 67. Did you know you were capable of that? Um, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised yourself. Yes, sir. <laughs> that second lap. Okay, so walk us through sort of that, that race and how it all played out because the guys got out hot. Yeah. And they were just, bumping. You paced yourself. Yeah, there was a, fight, a bit of a fight, I would say, just kind of just in terms of just them just brushing shoulders with each other. Yes. So I seen they got out really well. They passed me on the top curve. I told myself before I came in, a ri in this race, I have to be patient. Usually I'm running very wild. I stayed calm the whole race while they were battling it out. I knew that they were going to get tired of battling each other out. And so I could outsmart them and come behind 
behind them. And not too far. I couldn't stay too far behind, but I had to be there right there. And so I knew that I had to come off. And the curves are longer than regular tracks. So I knew that I was going to have to come off the last um, curve and bring it in hard. That last turn. Did you yes, know that you had them? Did you hear the crowd? Oh uh, yes, sir. I heard. That that's probably the reason why I was able to run 46. Without the crowd, I don't. It probably wouldn't have been as spectacular as it was. Yeah. Give us a little context of like the Bullis team culture and just like you got you had your own section up there, just kind of yeah. really. You were celebrating, for you. going crazy <laughs> yeah. with them after. That um, was cool. It's like a family. So like whenever uh, you could have seen last night when we won the sprint medley relay, it was the same energy. I would like the same energy as everyone else gets. And so I was cheering for my teammates as well as they were cheering for me. And so if we give that energy back and forth, it's going to it's going to bring us up. And just like my uh, friend said that ran after me, she said without me and everybody getting hyped, she wouldn't have been able to do it. So if we got each other hype and my race got her hype, then she'll keep contributing because we have a four by two a big four by two later a and b team both in the final so we're gonna be it's gonna be um a finale later <laughs> yes sir i love that and so you finish up the race i mean you said you were gonna outsmart them yeah Aren't you a freshman? Yes, sir. You're the outsmarting people and you're already a freshman? <laughs> yes, sir. Honestly, I came in this race, I studied, I probably went to sleep a little later than I should have, actually watching interviews and studying what they do and all this, um, all different things. And so I basically passed the test, what I did, yes. More I than wish, passed it. I wish Matt can, can get the, the, the race up here so we can break it down for you. We can yeah. actually pull it up on the iPad, hopefully. Um, and you can draw for us and show us like all your big moves. But I guess for you, like you're 15 years old, how did this happen all so quickly? Like, What was your entry point into the sport? Um, I was eight years old and no, I started out when I was seven. I wasn't able to uh, go to the Junior Olympics. I lost by 0.1 seconds to go to the Junior Olympics when I was seven years old. I told myself from there on, I had something. That that moment was the uh, time of my life. And from there in the 400, eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 year old, 13, 14, 15, I've won a national championship in the 400. And so it means everything to me, come back each year, racing new competitors. But this year, it was special because I wasn't just racing age group. I was racing against 17 year olds, 18 year olds. I looked at the list and it was all 12 graders and one 11th grader and one 9th grader. So the, seeing the nine on the list means it, like a lot. Now, <laughs> yeah. you you said before the race the thing that you were maybe most excited for was getting an opportunity to meet Sydney. Yes, yes. I yes. think you got an opportunity yes, to meet I, Sydney. I, I, Tell I, me about even, that. I couldn't even believe my eyes. Like <laughs> I was stunned. Yes. That's yes. that final hundred. You saw yes. her at the finish line. That's what got you that yes, final yes, 50. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love it. And then yeah, you gotta take a picture with her after. Yes. She, she, I mean is that the sort of position you want to be in one day? You want uh, to be the pro who everyone yes sir, wants yes to sir. meet? Yes, sir. That's my goal. That's my goal. I look up to everybody. Um, everybody out here, the supporters, the um, mentors, Trayvon Brummel, Sydney, I got to meet. They, It's everything. Like, I'm thankful for you guys uh, bringing me and able to meet these because without them, I don't think I would be as hype as I was <laughs> to run. Yeah. Is this maybe one of the coolest meets you've ever been at? Yes. This, this and Bill Rose game this year, I've had a lot of opportunities to run at big stages and these big stages, I can't wait till <laughs> I got three more years of high school left and I can't wait to see what to come. So you're running the four by 200? Uh, four by four. four okay, by you're four doing tomorrow. the four by 400. Yes, sir. I'm guessing your anchor? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> How, how's the team look for that? Um, We look pretty good. Um, Everybody's well and they're excited for my race, so yes, sir. You're gonna take the crown off for that? Uh, yes, sir. Are yes, you sir. gonna sleep yes, with sir. this thing on? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna be right next to me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. Yes, sir. So when, do you like have other pros that you look up to? Oh uh, yes. Um, honestly, before I uh, I ran for um, track 757 and I was in Virginia, and my coach was Grant Holloway. His dad was my uh, coach, and so yes, I, I look up to him. I look up to every single athlete. Everybody's inspiration. Like every everybody out here, I take a little tips from everybody to take it on the track. So, yeah. Why do I feel like we're going to be talking to Quincy for many, many more years to come? <laughs> I think so too. I think I think you know we'll be interviewing you at your first Olympic trials at, at, at potentially the Olympics yeah. and stuff. Like the future is so bright for you. Thank you, thank you. Forty six is unbelievable. <laughs> like I guess. I, I'm just a, we're we're watching the NCAA meet right now, and like yeah. you're you're already like getting ready to get competitive with the, the big guys. What do you do next? Like um, how do you keep getting faster from here? Practicing. I 
I give anybody you can ask. I give 110% every single practice. I, I come through the 400s at 50 sometimes at practice. Like, I push myself to my limits until I can no more. Every week I usually throw up at least once a week, but I know that that tells me that I'm pushing myself as hard as I can no matter what. And we have like a great team and we push each other every day because that's the only way we can get better. So, yeah. Is the 400 your favorite event? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. What do you love about it? Um, I can. I don't have to. I can stay patient. Like in the in the 60 or the 100, if you do something wrong, the race is over. You can come back off of a little mistake and be able to run your race. And also, the 400 is probably the hardest, one of the hardest races. And <coughs> if you can run that. You're, you're a man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What's the goal now outdoors? You're in 46. Like, what, um, what do you do? What, what's the outdoor season look like? I, I, just, I don't even know what to say next. So I hope I can run better than what I ran today in outdoor, but I don't know what the future holds for me. And keep practicing hard, and you never know what we can see outdoor. I feel like we'll see you at Penn Relays. You're going to get yourself a, a big Penn Relays wheel and a watch or something like yes, that. Yes, sir. I hope you, so. You've, I hope got, so. you've got a lot of good things to look forward to. All right. Well, Quincy, we appreciate you taking the time for this. We're gonna we're gonna pull up we're gonna pull up the race here, okay. and you're gonna walk us through and talk to us about what exactly you're thinking as it's going on. Okay. Let's see. We'll pull it up right it's over just here. So don't freak out. All right. Well, let me get this thing started. All right. The start. What's going through your head? Um. Them right there, they are pulling on to me. I'm telling myself I gotta stay focused. I gotta stay focused on my race. I have to run my own race. They're coming out extremely hard, and right when they break into this turn, they start to bump each other. I tell myself, stay calm. This would see right here. They start bumping each other, and I took my long turn like I would regularly, and I they're still battling it out. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, fast forward. <laughs> jumped a little bit. That was a moment. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Mac, we're having a couple technical difficulties here. That's all right. Well, I wanted to get to the end here. We have it? Oh, there it is yeah, right I there. think it might be coming back. All right, it's buffering right now. All right, take us through. This is now the second lap. Oh, um, no. Yeah, it is the second lap. Yes. They're oh, starting, boy. They're starting to get worn out because they've been battling the whole time. And right here, I just give it everything I can. Coming down that, that firework, I've been watching this. I've been watching this all last year. And I was just like, what if I could do this one day? And there's me right there. Yes. Look at that yeah. celebration. Yeah. A little, like, Superman <laughs> sort of thing going. Yeah. Oh, and this oh, is this the moment. Is the dream come true. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And I have to make sure that I congratulate every single person that raced because without them, I wouldn't have been able to do it. They ran the first 200 extremely hard, and then I got hype on my team. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ah, oh, electric. You know, we need like a thousand of views to like continue to grow this sport and make yes, it sir. more popular. Yes, sir. But Quincy, I appreciate you taking the time Thank you. sitting down with us. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sure this is not the last time we're going to be yes, chatting sir. with you. Yes, sir. You've got a bright future ahead. Thank you so much, Quincy. Awesome. All right, I think our next guest host is in the house. Wow, non stop. It just does not stop here at New Balance Nationals. It's a who's who. Yeah. We're going to run it back. Last year at New Balance Nationals when we debuted this show, one of our first guest hosts was the one and only world championship gold medalist in the steeplechase, Emma Coburn. Emma, welcome back to After the Final Lap. Hi, thanks. This is so much better than the Armory, isn't it? <laughs> we haven't even so seen bright. you. We can actually have a conversation and watch the meet. This is so great. This is the first time we've seen you since you've gotten to Boston. How's everything been? What have you been up to? Um, I've been running. I've been chilling. I haven't seen you, but I'd seen yeah, you. We hung out on out. Thursday. Um, and yeah, just hanging, wearing some New Balance clothes. What do you think of Boston as a running city? Do you like going for a jog here? I like going for a jog here. I Honestly, a lot of most cities, it's a great place to go for like a five mile run. But then I think of what I want to actually live here and fully train. And I'm glad I live in Colorado, you know. I'd but say if you're working a job, 
Boston is like the best. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's a run every day right outside. The indoor and, tracks, it's crazy. There's yep. indoor tracks everywhere that are open to the public, and the Charles is a great place to run. Oh, we got some drama. Yeah, the, 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 the atmosphere is being set behind us. Uh, checking out the meet like this, I guess, how special has this been? Uh, you know, we've heard that the, eventually New Mouse Nationals was going to come to the track, but we're finally here. What's it been like? What's the atmosphere? How would you describe it? I mean, as we can tell, it's pretty fun. It's yep. pretty cool. Um, I love that there's so many, like, repeat athletes that come back and compete year after year, and I think that shows, like, that New Balance really treats their athletes, the, the kids competing, like, super well, and creates a fun environment so I love watching it I'm always in awe at how fast these kids are because I wasn't very fast in high school so whenever I see these people running incredible times like the men's 5k today was or the boys 5k today was yep. so good um it's really fun we have the the boys 800 is actually about to go Can and we do the picture in picture we're gonna we test it? Emma to see if she has a future in broadcasting oh. maybe. to be fair I only knew that we were doing this about three seconds ago so <laughs> I've not done my research no it's all good we we'll got, it, we got it yeah but again again to your point sort of like we're, we're watching these races we've got NCAs on the screen right next to us as well and like Roisin Willis did, I think she just won yeah yeah Roisin and Juliet went one too in the 800 final yeah. and wow. like those are two people that we got the chance to meet like to your point like at a meet like this we sort of start to you know forge that connection with like the next generation of stars it's a cool thing yeah and I think it's like we as the pros see how fast these up and comers are yeah. and we have to just stay on it like the gap isn't that big so it's really fun to be here as a spectator and a fan um, and yeah I'm always just so impressed you have to are you one of those where it's like back in my day we didn't have pacing lights and <laughs> the spikes were different right. and we ran in the snow I did I mean I saw the pacing lights and I was like these kids better run fast no um, I really just the, the work ethic that a lot of these kids that are here have and have to be consistent in that work is so impressive to me that they're not, they're at their home tracks, they're not running with these nice lights and this music, like, they're not doing that. So if they're working hard when no one's watching to get here, like, I'm super impressed. But yeah, back in my day, it was uphill both ways, yeah. it was snowing, <laughs> we ran in cardboard, you know. Well, you got to experience both versions, you know, like, these athletes here never knew the track that you had to compete on. Yeah, I would love if some of these athletes wanted to go compete in the original University of Colorado indoor track. Okay. It's um, it's 200 meters, very you know tight turns, and yeah, and not super shoes. So my times take 30 seconds off. Right? 30 seconds, I love That's it. That's the conversion. That's a great conversion. All right, we're throwing up the boys 800. I mean, the the man to watch here is Aaron Salman. Ran 150 at Sound Running last week. He's on the. Oh, I have Outside a fun story about um, Aaron, oh. Aaron Solomon. Oh my God, they're already starting. Um, he asked, he's been at foot law, uh, Champ Sports um, Cross Country, and uh, when I saw him last, he said, if he wins the race, will I follow him, in, him on Instagram? And I said, yeah, and he, he didn't win Champs, but he said, if he wins here, will I follow him again? And I said, yeah, so I'm rooting for him. All right, so we'll find out very shortly if he's going to go up in Instagram followers. But he also told us that he was going to go ahead of the pacing lights, and I think the whole field right now is ahead of those is pacing out. lights. Well, that would, that's what you would expect in an 800, for sure. So Salmon's there. I believe that we have a rabbit out there in front taking him out. There are a couple boys that were at um, Champs Cross, which shows their range here, which is awesome. Aaron oh. Salmon opened up with the 150. And that's Matsada uh, taking him through, and then Rainier. Salman is in the pack. Maybe uh, something that we're not necessarily expecting is Simeon Burnbaum, a sub four miler in his own right, is starting to move up on the outside. Simeon, he's good. He was uh, he was at champs. He's he's looking he's strong. Right and he ran lane really two, smart I think, for the most part of this race. And that's Pen. Tohas, the Jesus coming up at 600 meters. And I think Matsada was not a rabbit. He is fully in it. He's still ahead of the lights. This and the question is now is if Leaf is going to be able to get him with just 100 meters left. Oh, the crowd is going wild. They're on pace for 147, 148. 
The entire crowd is on their feet as they come off the final turn. The national record is 147. Oh, just off the national record, but what wow. an epic race. 148.27. That was wow. awesome. Really big upset there. I'll give it to these high schoolers. They know how to celebrate right after a race. Oh, there is absolutely They're soaking electric. it in, you know? I love it. He looked so good. That was really impressive. Yeah, there have been a lot of celebrations, and we have no one to blame except Trayvon Brumell. <laughs> He's really good at it. Centro's another good one. You have yeah. no one to blame except the uh, fireworks that are in the last 20 meters. That hypes you up, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Five cameras of Sidious at the finish <laughs> line asking you to do something crazy. Yep, that, that'll do it. Do you celebrate? Like it. No. Why? You're tired. Well, I just am like, it's... I feel... I'm very happy, but I don't know if you felt this way, but it was just, that was the plan. Like, I executed my plan. So then I never I'd... planned to win. <laughs> that was always a surprise if I won a race. So I'm not, like, jumping up and down. Even when I surprised myself in Worlds in 2017 and won, I celebrated with Courtney and, like, we were hugging and stuff. But typically, I'm like, yep, yeah, that was my plan. And I'm just like, time to cool down and get some protein and take a nap. All you know? business. Yeah, yeah. But I'm really happy. But I just, yeah, I, I planned to do it. So I nailed it. I need to learn, though. I could take some moves from these kids. In a steeplechase, like, yeah, I guess, like, you could celebrate coming off the, lo the final barrier if you got enough room on the next person. Yeah, you can't celebrate do too like much in a 360, yeah, like, yeah, jump yeah. off of it, do, do some moves. But, no, the one time I, um, my very first international steeplechase at the London Diamond League in 2011, a long time ago, uh, the winner finished as I was jumping that last hurdle, last barrier, and they shot off a cannon oh, no. as a celebration. And I was like, that is not okay. Cause uh, we're still racing and doing stuff. Like these, the New Balance Nationals firework display, that's appropriate, but like don't shoot off a cannon. That causes some chaos. That That's not a good idea. It's like the Hunger Games or something. It, yeah, yeah. it was. For everyone who didn't win the race, they shot off a cannon. Yeah, yeah. It was like, everyone just stop in place where you are and give up because you lost. Oh my God. In, in terms of like ways that we should make the sport more fun for fans, like here we're doing a lot of experimenting. You see the lights, the music, the entrances. Do you have any bright ideas that we can experiment with? I'll leave it to the experts, but I, I do appreciate when those... Um, intros are, as a fan, I just love when those intros, they've done it at World Champs a couple times. Um, they did it here for Grand Prix and for New Balance Nationals. When those intros are uh, intricate, it just makes you feel as the athlete experiencing it and as the viewer. They're like, this is special and this is cool. And the athletes deserve to feel like badasses like you're about to go do something really special and rare so i i love that part of it um and the rest of it i'll leave to you guys you know i don't think we're in charge of that sort of thing no we do what we can every now and then um last time i guess we chatted uh here a couple of weeks ago it was we were talking about how you're going to australia how was it now that we got you back on thank you so much kyle for tweeting um i owe my happiness to you uh it was so fun i loved it i will like i'm on the record now if i ever get invited back i will go yeah you did say that now you have to go i know i'm gonna yeah no but i will i loved it that much because the 2k the 10k is like so hard a 2k relay so fun there's nothing to lose the course was really challenging but we had a really really good time um and yeah, Australia is just a cool place to go. You were the only person to hurdle the tires. Was that true? Um, as far as I know. At least by choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and we were like messing around when we did our pre-meet shakeout. Uh, and because there were the two men on the team, the USA team are also steeplers. And we were just joking around of like, oh, we'll jump over these. And sarcastically, I sarcastically hurdled. And... <laughs> Did it successfully, but I just wanted to Ironically. know. Ironically. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it you know, was uphill I'm, too, I'm right? So kooky. Um, yeah, it was uphill, and so I just did it like messing around, and then in the moment, I had to pass someone, and she was slowing down a lot, and I was feeling really strong, and she was just in my way, and I hurdled it, and I was like, boop, that was fun, but it was uphill, 
So I didn't do it like everyone. I just passed her and then was able to just kind of weave up. Just to show that you could. <laughs> just to, you know, be jazzy. Keep yeah. people guessing. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get. My favorite was that there was the shoots of the different wines that you could go down, right? Like, oh, yeah. Like you could go down the Sauvignon Blanc. Or yeah, what, yeah. Tell me, what was that? Um, I forget situation. the blends, but the the intent of the course was to have all these features that were like iconically Australian. So there was a sand pit that they had like pretend Bondi Beach lifeguards at out like watching and then they had different markers that were very Australian. So I guess Australian wine is a is a thing. Did you try any? Probably <laughs> later. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got to run through this little vineyard and it was really beautiful and I saw a ton of really cool like video and photos from it. But no one ran on the far side like the tangent the closest route was a sh like chardonnay or i can't remember what what it was but it wasn't my favorite wine and i had to just run through it because you know i'm doing it for team usa you're kooky but you're not that kooky i'm a kooky girl but i'm not that kooky <laughs> how hard is a 2k cross-country race like when you finish are you as tired as you are when you finish a steeplechase or were you kind of like, I had way more left and I mistimed it because I had no splits and I had no idea yeah. what a 2K uh, cross country race exactly. is supposed to feel like. Super experience having done one 2K cross country race. Um, I definitely probably felt too good after. Like I was just so happy, but it's hard when it's so hilly and all these little technical elements to know when to push, when not to push. My leg was really fun because being early on, I got to just like pass a bunch of people. So I felt like I was pushing correctly and not like not being a baby because I was passing people. But um, if there you were get people passed, you are a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Emma Coburn. <laughs> I'm quote. more mean like I wasn't dead at the end. And I don't know if I, there's probably little parts I could have gone harder, but in the moment you're just excited to be passing people. So you're not necessarily paying attention to like super, super precise effort. Did you trade uniforms with anyone? Like, is that is that element of the game too old for you now? You're like, I got every uniform. I played that I've game. I've honestly never thought to do that. No way. No. I have a thousand, not a thousand, I have several Team USA jerseys, and I've never, I think I, like, one time, like, traded pins with someone at one Olympics, yeah. but I'm a, I'm a loser at that. I need to step up. I, I The uniforms, I have some. You don't really wear them. It's not, it's not a big part of my life but anymore. But like maybe, maybe in 30 years it will be cool, yeah. and you'll like be looking at them and be really proud. I've never done it. Maybe I need to. Uh, They're so sweaty. Yeah. No. The, and girls, it's harder to be like, them. take your top off. Let's trade. So then afterwards, you raced at the Mori Plant meet as well. Yeah, correct? I raced How a 1500. Was it was fun. It was a little tactical, which is not. Um, it was. It was really fun. But like our time was kind of slow. But I loved it. I was just, I was a happy camper when I was down there. It was really fun. So I, I'm not being, sort like, I'm not trying to be dramatic, but really your tweet was, gave me a lot of happiness. It was the domino to start yeah. a and, lot of fun. And now you're moving to Australia. Honestly, <laughs> if we had a parallel life, Joe would 100% want to move there. And so I'd have to. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Emma, I think we'll sub you out for a sec because we're going to bring on our guest. Uh, we've got the boys 800 meter champion joining oh. us. Come on in. Congratulations. Thank All you. right, Tenota. Hey. Congratulations on that victory. Nice job. Of course, thank you. Wow. We thought you were a pacer there we for a second. We thought you were a pacer and you t you told us. Yeah, I saw I saw I saw myself on the on the diff stream with like with, when I was at the 300 I was like, man, no one's I was like no one's near me. Coming crazy. into this race, did you feel like a little bit of the underdog in this one? Of course, like Aaron Solomon has talked about chasing the record coming into this, but like for you, I guess, where did you come from for this one? Well, like, when I came, I was hoping to, I was, of course, hoping to win. But then as I got closer, as I got closer to the race, I was like, I just want to run under 149. I told everyone that I wanted to run under 150 just to, to, just to keep it, like, light. So I don't, like... You skipped the 149s? I did. I did skip the 149s. <laughs> indoors, of course. Indoors. Have you run 149 outdoors? Yeah, I ran 149.87. Okay. Point, point but indoors, I feel like the 800 is quite a bit slow. Yeah, no, it is, for sure. Yeah. So you skipped the 149s indoors, straight to 148. I mean, I think the thing that stands out was you were not scared to take it. 
That was that was my whole race when it comes to this. I said I said I want to take this that hard. I want to come to the 400 and under and under 53 because I knew because back in out I came to the 400 at 40 no at 53.0. So I was like. Since, since 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 I'm more like accustomed to running, getting out fast. As for my training, I was like, let me just take it out, you know, at like uh, under like uh, 53. Now, do you come at, at the 800 for more of the 400 side of things or the 1500? The 1500 side of things. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you believed in your strength there that you could just hold on. Yeah. Did you know that they were coming? Oh yeah, I, I knew. I knew. I knew someone was coming at least. I knew. Um, I thought Aaron was gonna be like, like right on me. I thought he was going to like pass me at like maybe the 400 if I was out in like 54. I thought uh, Miguel was going to be there. I thought I thought for sure Alex Leith was, was also going to be there. But Alex, but he was there at, 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 the, at the end, which I saw. Yeah, and did you have an awareness of where exactly he was? Like, were you looking at the board? Yeah, I, I was. I was looking to see where everyone was every, every time I passed through there. You don't have to look back anymore with the board like that. Exactly, yeah. What about the lights? The lights played a factor. At first, you guys were way ahead of them, and then, of course, like, it catches up. But uh, then towards the end, you could see them. I didn't. I actually didn't see them at all. I tried really? looking. I, I tried looking down at the 750 mark, and I didn't see it once I uh, once I uh, once I like crossed the line. So, so we have the race here right now. You start in the and outside lane. Yeah. Tell us what right. you see so, as it goes. So as I was going out, I felt Miguel and Aaron on my side. And then I saw Miguel in front, and I felt him slow down a little bit. So I was like, let me just take it, right? So then, so then I took it. I was going. I was in the lead. In the Did lead. you want to be on the outside? Yeah, honestly, because. I thought like having the rail would be like would make me a little too like comfortable. So I thought being on the outside would be would be better for me. Do you see 26 0 when yeah, you cross? Yeah, I saw I, I heard 26 when I crossed and I was like, oh man, I can't I, I was like I can't I can't I can't like get comfortable at this. I have to I have to keep on going harder. So over here I just kept I just kept my stride, I quickened my arms. I was this going. This guy was closing. You have such a good yeah, stride. I, I, I feel like you might run 147, 146 pretty soon. Hopefully, hopefully. So then I came through. I couldn't see the time, and then I and then I saw the time when I crossed. It was at 52. I was like, yes. But then it was over here. I said, now, now, now I have to keep the pace going because because if I slowed on on the 3200, everyone's gonna come and catch me. Yeah, you so saw then, that they started coming a little bit, and you you put your head down and you went. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, now is the time where I have to where I have to continue running fast. So then I came. I was running. I was running, and then I come onto the last onto onto the 50. I start. This is where I start to like really hold my. Or I start to like hold my form, and then like pick it up. We I worked on this in training. I did like I, I made sure my form was was more like a hunter form, and then I and then I like ex and, and I extended my stride. So then I was going, and then I, I looked up at the board. I saw him coming. So I was like, oh man, this is the I, I was scared. I was scared. Board. I was like, I was like, this guy's actually just like, like on my shoulder. And so then this is where I really started to push, and then and then I started to grit over here, and then over here I was just I was just. I was pumping my arms, pumping them. I saw 147 and 148. I was as I was crossing. I was like, no way, I just did that. <laughs> I crossed. I was like, no way, I just did that. And the celebration with the tape, so fun. That was crazy. I felt I felt so happy when I when I won and I came through in 148. Is this the biggest win of your career? For certain, the big the biggest one, the biggest PR. That's the time I've ran overall over my over my whole PR in any race I've ever ran. This is a this is a race I'm the, that I'm the most proud of. And what do you do now? Like, how do you? Wh where do you go from here? At this point, I think I might try for the uh, for for the outdoor record. There you go. Well, you know, a lot of men have it. tried. A yeah, lot of people a, a lot, tried. A lot of people tried. record, but it's crazy. I, I know it's going to be super hard, but if I just if I just did what I did here, but 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 in like but in better fitness and with better like, and with better and on an outdoor track, I think I think I could do it sometime in like maybe June. I think. Are you a senior? Yeah, I'm a senior. Where are we going next year? Georgetown. Oh, very wow. good. They've had a few good 800 runners yeah, there. Yeah, they have uh, Matthew uh, Matthew P over there. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, exciting. So give us a little context as to like your training setup right now. You know, who's your coach? Like, what what's that been like? Uh, I, have a, I have a private coach. Her name is uh, her, her name is Chris. I uh, I train with my school about like three times a week, over uh, like like during the weekdays, and I go and I go over to train with her during. <laughs> Like two days of the week, the, the, on those two days is where I do like, um, like more, more like more like speed training, and then days that I'm not with her, I do like more like um, endurance runs or like or like or like recovery runs because my school doesn't have a track, so I can't really do like aerobic track stuff there. 
So I, so I do all my track work with my uh, private coach. So how long have you been in the sport? Are you like one of those kids, we're just talking to Quincy, who's saying he started when he was seven years old. Are you, are you a lifer? I started this when I was a freshman. Yeah. I started, um, I, I, I only did cross country because I thought I wouldn't make the soccer team because I was really, really small. But I heard everyone makes cross country, so I was like, why not do cross country? I did, I did cross country in middle school, and I had like, like eight meets total, and I won all of them. So I was like, you know, let me see what I can do in, uh, in high school. And then, and then I, I was planning to go back to soccer after, after, the, after the fall season ended. But then everyone was like, no, you're fast, man. Stay, stay, stay and do track. So I was like, why not? So then everything basically led up to this. What do you love about it? The running, definitely the friends I make. There's no one toxic in track. Everyone's always putting... Like, like, a <coughs> everyone's always putting like each other up. There's, there's, there's no one that's that's always that that's like, oh no, you're slow. You, you like, you like, uh, shouldn't run. There's, there's no one who said that to me. So I think I should encourage others so that they can also, see, you know, hopefully one day, go, like, comes like love track. Do you love the pro side of the sport? I mean, we had Sydney here earlier. It's like before the, I don't think she held the the finish line tape for you. But like, do you follow the pros? Are you a fan? Yeah, of course. I follow I follow, I follow the pros. I follow one of. Okay, this is a little basic, but one of my one of my favorite runners is is Donovan Brazier. Yeah. Since since <coughs> I remember um at Worlds when. When he um, when he ran the uh, the 800, everyone in the front went out in like 49 high, 50 low, and then he came through like 52, and then he came through the last 400 looking super duper strong and smooth, and he passed everyone any one. Well, you ran more like a David Rudisha today. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just took it out of lead and hoped that and hoped that that I didn't die. Is this, was this the big one for you this weekend? Do you have anything else going on? I have the mile tomorrow, actually. What are the hopes there? I just hope to get top six. That's it. Because uh, my, my endure, I'm, I'm a little low on the endurance side compared to most of the milers. My speed is there, so like maybe at the end I can like pick off one or two people. But like I just want to stay with the with the front pack and hope for good things to come. What's I mean, the mile PR right now? Four ten. Okay. But I'm forty eight two indicates a little bit faster than four ten. <laughs> exactly. So, you know. so I'm hoping to at least get my state record, which is four eight point two. So so and in a race like tomorrow, that's definitely going to be possible. Awesome. Well, we'll let you get to recovering and doing all your stuff so that you're ready for that race. No, no, I appreciate you taking the time for this. Maybe of course, we'll see you again tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. Win again, you get to sit back in the seat here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'll try. All right. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank Thanks you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. All right, Kyle. We just keep getting guests after guests on this show. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring on... We'll bring on Christian. Christian. Christian Noble. New Balance is own Boston's boy. <laughs> yeah. They, they, showing up to the track today, they asked if he had a ticket or credential, and he just said, I live here. <laughs> I, just said, is I, that true? I just walked in and said, uh, I, have I a live here. Like, I uh, was just going up, showed my little pass. I didn't, I didn't have like a, a badge or anything. I was like, ah, I work here, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, do you, what have you made of New Balance Nationals? Like, this, this, this is my is first crazy. time at New Balance Nationals, actually, really? for indoors. Uh, I didn't get uh, in high school, but I mean, the atmosphere is insane. Um, you know, I, I didn't even watch it in high school. I, I wasn't really following that much, but the atmosphere is crazy. The, the kids have been running crazy. To be on the infield for the 5K and hold the tape um, was electric. So. As, as a professional, it's kind of interesting. Like, you don't get to just hang out at track meets too no. often. You're always there on business. Yeah. Watching the athletes, are you kind of getting a little itch of like, I yeah, wish I was I'm, out there right now. I, mean, I want to hop in that five. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You could have done something off a pace like that. Yeah. No, that was, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, you know, like you said, being a, a pro and at the track meets, you're kind of tucked away in a corner, headphones in, just kind of being in the zone and to kick back and uh, just watch races all day. Is, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I'm not going to race again until May and I'm already itching to get back out there. So, yeah. I love so we it. got the chance to have Sydney on here and, and talk to her about kind of like her experience competing at this meet and then yeah. getting to, you know, the level that she's at in, in her career. But I guess like, what do you think like athletes could learn from a story like yours where it was like, oh yeah, you didn't compete at New Balance indoors yeah. and you ran division two, like there's still a pathway for the pro life. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't have the, the crazy success story right away. Um, 
Yeah, I think you hit it right on the right on the dot. You know, not the path most taken. You know, didn't make nationals. Like almost dead last at Foot Locker. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a story for everybody, and um, just because you're not winning these races, you know, that's okay. You know, there's still there's still time. You're young. You know, this isn't the end of the world if you don't win or uh, break a record, or you know, even if you get dead last, that's okay. Um, yeah, I think that's like one of the hardest challenges for high school athletes is because everyone's on their own path right now. And yeah. I know for me personally, like I was five foot nothing <laughs> standing on the line against guys with beards, and it's tough, right? Like knowing that you're at a different part in your career and your progression and you just have to focus on yourself. Yeah. Do you feel that now as a pro or it's like, no, like I know it's my first year as a pro, it doesn't matter. I, when I'm on the line, I'm on the line. Yeah, I think nowadays it's just like, I'm here to compete and uh, like, yeah, it's my first year as a pro, but I know that like, I can run with just about, hopefully just about anybody uh, in the world right now. and. Yeah. We have a bunch of high schoolers who've been hanging out in the Sidious Mag booth, and all of them have aspirations and goals yeah. to be a professional. Was that you? And no, it, it didn't hit me until uh, like my fifth year of college. Uh, it took me like, I think I put on Instagram, it took me four and a half years to break 14, and you know, I'm watching high school kids do it, so. <laughs> um, I think the future so future so bright for these guys, and um, you know, I, I hope they all can achieve that one day, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So the the races here have been fairly impressive. What did you what really impressed you about that five k? Man, it looked like they weren't going with the pace at first. Um, right away, I was like, ah, oh, they're not going with it. They had, they actually had asked for like thirteen thirty, <laughs> and the officials were like, no. Or the guys were like, no, yeah, like, like thirteen fifty seven, like just kick, you know, just just get the record. Um, and then they didn't go with it, and I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be a good race, a good race to watch. And then they slowly crept and crept and got on it, and uh, he like got it right at the line, and it was it was, it was awesome. To watch. It was are epic. You, are you super impressed by high schoolers' ability to run the five k? Because even when you were in high school, it wasn't super common for high schoolers to run it. I mean, most of these guys' lifetime mileage is, is like relatively low. Yeah. You know, probably most of them don't have ten thousand miles on their legs in their yeah. life, and they have to come out and try to break fourteen minutes in a five k if they want yeah. to win national title. How do you think high school kids have evolved to be able to do an event and it's now a regular part of the program? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the shoes or the, the tracks are changing, but I think the mindset of high school kids is quickly changing of, I can do that, you know, why not me? And um, yeah, I mean, even the kids right here, like changing high, the high school landscape forever. I mean, every race it's like, I can do that. I can break four. Uh, like I can break 147. Um, I think if more kids are just believing themselves that you know they can they can push the limits, and I think the next generation of kids that are maybe eighth or ninth graders right now, this is going to be them in a few years, and maybe they want to push the limits that these guys have set. When you're over here signing autographs, taking pictures, yeah, meeting yeah. the high schoolers, <laughs> what do, what do high schoolers ask you most? They ask a lot of recruiting questions. They ask a lot about Division Two or like. Uh, maybe some college experience that I've had, or like why D2? You know, why should I go D2? Or do you have schools that you recommend? I just tell, I just try to like inform kids on uh, the right questions to ask when talking to colleges. Don't get caught up in like the show or the basketball game. Um, you know, look at progression. Look, talk to freshmen that year. What's training been like? You know, ask the ask the important questions because the gear is only cool for you know three semesters, and then you start getting the same stuff. And um, I think running fast is a little bit more fun than, than the gear, but um, yeah, it's such an important decision that we put on like 16 year old kids. It really is. Although I will say, like nowadays, like Division Two, I, you guys would field like a pretty all star, like the best. Division two runners ever would field an amazing DMR if it was yeah. you. There was the photo race there. Yeah, was it was like you, the, Ribich, Bassett, Bassett. Who would be the Drew Wendell? Drew, that there is a good go. team. That that's is a good the, team. That's the A squad right there. So. <laughs> the game has changed very. Quickly. It really has, because like even though like we're seeing times run this weekend at the D two championships and the D three yeah. championships that you, a, you know a decade ago we probably would have been like wait that would have been a really good seed at. D1. So how are things going right now for you? You know, you, off season? Yeah, like did yeah. You, you took a couple weeks off after the indoor season? Yeah, so after US Champs, just decided to take a down week, just run really easy mileage, like 30 minutes a day. Um, 
Went home for a few days. Oh, see the fam? Yeah, go see the fam out in Texas. Uh, enjoyed nice 80 degree weather. Got away from Boston and uh, then we went to uh, Las Vegas for um, like a marketing retreat with our, the people who represent us. And then, yeah, just back and I'm like three workouts in and I'm not going to race till May 25th, probably LA. And yeah, nice. just building That's, up. That is a good training block. Do you enjoy this part of the season when you just see like, all right, it looks like the next 10 weeks is train and watch Netflix? Yeah. Um, college me would have said no, but I really enjoyed the fall. I really enjoyed March training. Uh, I, I love the buildup now. Um, in college, I was very, let's race every weekend. I'll just race in the shape. I raced like 33 times last year. Looking back, I don't know how I did that or maintained that. But yeah, I love the build up. I love the hills. I love the tempos. Um, you hear yeah. about the, the high schoolers like tripling this weekend, right? Well, the like, double threshold thing is, is catching on on all, yeah, in all even circles. Even the high school kids are double thresholding <laughs> in New Balance yeah. Nationals. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, man. like um, Ellie Shea running the two mile and 5K. Like, that's insane. And yeah. the mile and 800, I, I <laughs> yeah. think. Like, that's. Four, four really heavy races. You're gonna leave here with a lot of national titles potentially. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how legends get started. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, it's interesting because you can totally make your name as a high school athlete. Mm -hmm. At a meet like this. And we, we see it all the time. Like a lot of the high schoolers' favorite athletes are other high schoolers because it's so relatable, right? Yeah. You are going to nine periods a day at school and you have to wake up at the crack of dawn and do homework and it's like a very comparable similar situation and they get placed on a pedestal I feel like and those become the favorite athlete it's not necessarily everyone looking up to the college or pro athletes yeah who was your favorite athlete growing up I really I mean I was like a, a Ritz Webb Ryan Hall guy you know the big three was kind of my timing yeah I'm with Sydney in, in like her th uh, thought process that we need more posters. We again. do need more. Have you ever seen yourself on a poster? No. Wall like one? a poster? Like, yeah. Like, I think Lee just put one up. Oh really? Uh, in like our locker room. Yeah. So that's about it though. <laughs> yeah. We need more posters. We need, we need cards. We need like trading cards. Yeah. Trading well, cards. This all one. ties into that whole idea of making it a little bit more aspirational, right? Like you aspire to be like the guy on your wall. I mean, Craig Mottram, I had a, a Craig Mottram poster that he had signed. And like, you know, talk about guys that I look up to. You know. Yeah. So, you know, and you're looking at them every day and when you're training in high school, it's like one day I want to be like that. Yeah. And now he's a coach. Yeah. My uh, college roommate, uh, Thomas, when we were freshmen, hung up a picture of uh, Nick Simmons and like, I had no idea who that was. I was like, you gotta explain who this dude is. <laughs> yeah. this, dude, this dude I'm gonna be looking at for the next nine months. I'm gonna need to know who that is. <laughs> and he explained like Nick Simmons and like D3 and American Champ and um, yeah, it was just like super cool that you know he had that person to look at and I didn't, I never did that because I didn't follow running as much as he did. But yeah, it's like cool to have someone to look up to like that. All right, are we gonna do this thing again, Mac, where we? Put on the uh, race on screen while we while we watch. They're doing the mood lighting. Oh, wow. wow, this is pretty impressive. Showing off some capabilities we haven't seen yet. Wow, look at this. The fastest party. <laughs> this is very sick. What's the over under? Two oh four? No, two oh eight. Let's go two oh eight as the over under. Because I remember last year the race was Roisin Willis, Julia Whitaker, and like they, like yeah, I mean those two push in a race together could probably break yeah. two minutes, but they weren't quite there yet, and they I think they ended up running like 204. For these athletes, this must be an adrenaline rush, like they have never experienced before. Did you know that the flares that they're doing are it's cold? Yeah, I heard that recently. Yeah, it's not actual fire. It's a little safer. It's very safe. Like the fire department has had to sit here and watch. This is really cool. What was the coolest race atmosphere that you've ever been a part of? Like a Diamond League? Yeah, no, I mean, Milrose does. Milrose does it. Does uh, what about an outdoor special. meet? Uh, World Relays. Oh. Yeah, they, they, they had the drums going. Okay. Because that was in the Bahamas? Where yeah. did you do yours? Yeah. yeah. Run This Town by Rihanna. Great song. I like the big part of the 
Yeah, Mac has made a big deal. Mac is very excited behind us about the light situation. Major proponent for like uh, just the entertainment side of the sport. We said every uh, athlete in the championship race should have like a walkout song that they submit and you play right? it as like they the, run out. Yeah. Like, like 15 seconds of yeah. it. What would be yours? Something by Chloe. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're just performing tonight. But I had a. We did it actually when I was in Little League. I went to like a fancy baseball tournament once, and then like they made us all submit uh, a CD for our team. This is back when they used CDs to play uh, songs. And <laughs> Drop so like the tape. we all had like a track number assigned to us, and so I went up to the plate and I had uh, Ludacris's "Move, Bitch, Get Out the Way." That was allowed in Little League. <laughs> it, well, I thought it would have been. But like it was the coolest thing to walk up to the plate with with that song playing, and I get up to to home plate, you know, I'm, I'm tapping my my bat on the, you know, to take my batting stance, and immediately the ump just goes, "You're out of here." I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "I'm injecting you from the game for that song," and I was like, "You're kidding wow. me!" I got ejected for my walk-up song. The whole game in Little League, <laughs> but you didn't hit play on it. No, it played. That's what I mean. That's it, that, that seems like an unjust. But I requested that song. Okay. <laughs> now I gotta talk to the song. We gotta go way back. All right. So in this one, we've got Amelia Everett, Layla Haynes, and Jelena Napoleon, Katie Putman, uh, Kamea Haywood, Paige Shepard, Katie McPhail, and now the rest of the field just went blank on me. Isis but Grant. I believe. I believe is Isabel is in it. Yep, Isabel is in it. Isabel is the outdoor champion, so she's one to watch. Also, one of the funniest interviews that I've gotten to do over the past couple of days. Here's Emma. She made her way down from the Sidious Mag set to hang Emma out with Gee. Corey. Mm. All right, and the gun is up. And the race is off. Looks like we've got a decent number of women in this race. Ten, we'll see how they separate. Haywood is out in front right now. I'm saying 206 mid. You're saying 206, 206 mid? mid. This is not a slow pace. Haywood approaching 200 meters. 29. Oh, wow. Haynes and Leith right behind her starting to close the gap. Content to let Haywood do the work, but not for long. Haynes moving into second place, taking over, going into 300 meters. Wow. We are fully stretched out. I mean, we are on two flat 201 pace. Wow. As we approach 400 meters. This IMG Elite. Wow. 60.5. Haynes is continuing to push the pace. As Ince makes a move around Haywood and starts chasing down. Does she wait? Does she tuck back in? She's running in lane two. Bell Lap. Oh, wow. makes that definitive pass, and it's Ince coming up. Bell Lap, 200 meters to go. 132.5. I think we might see that under here. Ince is starting to pull away from the field. Wow, okay. Haynes is looking at the back of her. That's a lot of real estate for... Isabel looks like it she might made her just move be up too to far. Third, but quickly moves into second. It is all Although Ince. she is closing. 50 meters to go. Coming off that final turn, Ince is just staring at the clock. She's ahead of those lights. Wow. This is all her. What's the time on the clock as the flares are going off? Woo! 204.77. Wow. Allison Ince, your New Balance Nationals girls 800 meter champion. I believe this isn't the first race of hers that you've called. You called her, uh, she won the mile at the Trials of Miles New York City meet. She always says well when I'm calling it. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> this one's for you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, New Balance Nationals has a good history of athletes continuing on to the NCAA and doing big things. 
Yeah, so look for Allison Inns to win the NCAA <laughs> title in the years to come. I mean, look at that. It's, it was a four or five women under two, 210. Yeah, and I mean, seven women total under 210. That is depth right there. And then to have to cross the finish line and immediately be interviewed by two Olympians. Like, <laughs> probably a little starstruck. You're still trying to digest the fact that you what won a national title. <laughs> You got to make the most of that moment, too. It was last year, Natalie Cook on our show was just like, hey, would you run with us tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot your shot. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. This has been a this very fun... This is what's fun. unique, I guess, like, to New Balance Nationals. It's just, like, the star power that greets you at the finish line. You're not getting that anywhere else. Normally, you get sponsors holding the line, not sponsored professional athletes. All right, we're going to swap out Christian now. All right, Christian, thanks for joining us. Hey, Millie, hey. how's it going? What's up, gang? How are you doing? Good. No, I mean, no, how no, could you be? You, you just feel amazing being at this, in, in this environment. What have you made of being here? Yeah, I, um, I am kind of amazed. Yeah. It's so cool to see so many people here. I mean, like, you're normally here and it's empty. <laughs> what'd you say? You're nor when you're here, it's normally empty, empty, right? Empty. Oh, yeah, like in the late hours of the night when you're just like, I got to get that double in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you wish there were this many people yeah. here? You're like, maybe I'll remember them when I'm like grinding away. I'm like, oh, it's worth it. <laughs> That'll be easy to visualize for sure. Yeah. Future. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm kind of, are you guys amazed? I yeah. can't believe. Yeah. How much fun it's been. Yeah. Well, the oh times that these kids are running are, is also kind of crazy. The depth. Yeah. You know, it's like not just one kid yeah. running quickly. It's ten of them. I feel like that's what's different because I ran. I ran a lot of these meets when I was in high school, and like there, you always had like those couple of kids who are really, really good. But now it's like there's like ten or eleven, and they like can't fill these heats. And it is, yeah. They there's so many. There's so many good kids out there. Take us back. Okay. You know, now you're a professional athlete, but how did we arrive here today? What was yeah. what was your entry into the sport? So I ran um, in high. I ran a lot in high school. Um, was really good coming out of high school. Um, my one of my favorite memories ever is from a New Balance Nationals meet when really? I was yes, I got second to Alexa Ephraimson. I ran. She ran something crazy, like 4:35 or something. I think I ran 4:43 that day. Oh, that's um, not crazy at all. And then, well, <laughs> I was like, oh, "Is that good? Is that good? I think that's pretty good." And then, but then, but you know, you're comparing yourself to the next person, and you're like, "It's not as good as that." Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, the, at the, the time, high school record holder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but social media is so different. Like when I was, you don't have it. You don't yeah. know who's out there now. Like. You can see what are, what is everybody doing? Who's going to be at the race? Then I'm like, who is who's Alexa Ephraimson? <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, okay, it makes sense that she was so good at the time. But yeah, went to college um, at Providence College, and then that's how kind of, I found New Balance and the team. And yeah, smooth. Now, when you were in high school, did you know? Do you have the social media in the way that these kids have it like they they're following all their competitors day in day out they have youtube channels was that a thing for you no not even a little bit like i think i got i think i got instagram when i was uh a junior in high school which is like crazy to think of i never had a twitter i still don't have a twitter you used to just be able to take pictures of instagram in the yeah. app yeah yeah no exactly and that was okay and, well like <laughs> now then, when you do it, it's crazy <laughs> then i'm like I, maybe i mean it's probably so inspiring in a way i'm sure there's a lot of comparison and that is a little scary i think especially at, at a young age when you it's hard to put things into perspective and you don't know what's behind the scenes but yeah i think in a lot of ways it's good you can connect with your competitors it's fun to see what people are doing um yeah it makes coming to these things fun it's like oh i dm'd her over you know instagram we talked a little bit now she's going to be at this meet and that's really cool and i think there's a lot to gain from that but yeah do you do that now are you like, are you doom scrolling all day after a run on Instagram? Some days, some day. Don't we all? <laughs> we, we do. I actually. I don't have to race anyone that I'm following. <laughs> you do. Well, okay. I, I have a I have a rule oh, for let's Instagram. Hear it. Well, okay. My my general rule is um, 
because everybody is a peer at this level and so like I wouldn't follow somebody who wouldn't I wouldn't have a conversation with or like say hi to on the street okay so that's my general rule and then I you know and then then the follow can happen and then I'm excited to see their stuff and I'm somebody who really likes racing people that I know because it, it makes me excited it like I feel like it changes the dynamic it's like oh we're I get to do this with friends I don't have to this with competitors. Someone that you raced one time, you don't need to know what their like Saturday night plans are. <laughs> yeah, Where they're going like, to dinner. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and it's not it's not like a, uh, I hope it doesn't come off as like an ego thing, but it's more, <laughs> it's more of like a protection thing where it's like, I don't necessarily. Is that gonna help yeah. my run? Do they right. care? And it's not even just for running, but you wouldn't do that with a friend or like a stranger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've like, made that know, mistake before. It's like I met one person once and then like I'm following them and yeah. it's like, oh no, I don't care. Three months. <laughs> mute. Yeah. I guess mute is the <laughs> is the way to go. And or that, restrict them. Yeah, forever. there's like plenty of people that I look up to in this sport. Um, I don't know. A fall can be a kind of arbitrary, I suppose, but <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I hope that doesn't come off as an ego thing. I just, yeah, I feel like it's for me. I feel like it's a good role for like, yeah, I care. I care about what they're posting. I want to see what they're posting because I know we would have a conversation or like talk to each other in the street kind well, of thing. We were having this conversation with Trey yesterday when he was on, and he was saying that when he was younger, he didn't look up to pro athletes. Oh. Because he was like, I'm going to be a pro athlete. Yeah, it's your peer. Yeah, like, I'm going to be yeah. that. Why I'm, do I follow? I'm, I'm not following them. I'm <laughs> beating them. They can follow me. Yeah, it's the men. Yeah. yeah, they can follow me. I kind of admire that. <laughs> like, I was like, I did not have that much self-belief in myself. <laughs> like, do you think that that, like, do you think that that, that, like, helps the mindset? Do you think that that, like, would propel somebody in a way? Yeah, I mean, I think... When you're operating in such slim margins, having that belief, you know, that might be your advantage. That's what you bring to the line that no one yeah. else can. I do feel like distance runners aren't necessarily like that. Like, no. We don't have swagger like a 100-meter <laughs> no, global so. medalist would. <laughs> Sometimes I watch. We have a, something to learn from sprinters. Sometimes I watch sprinters and I'm like, I need, like, I need a fraction. I need 1 25th of that. Yeah. Like, distance runners are, like, hiding in the bathroom beforehand being like why am i doing this <laughs> i'm like on the line and i'm like, like, I'm like yeah. Yeah, good luck everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's all have a blast i hope so everybody fun. has fun today like i know i need like a tiny bit more of like <laughs> i'm like actually rooting for you to win <laughs> yeah. i hope you uh, me oh i don't worry about me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't even want to be here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well <laughs> so have things been going in training and 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 race plans i guess like we were just talking to Christian like the next 10 weeks he's looking yeah. at the schedule it's like all training yeah it is no it's gonna be a lot of training it's we have an extra week no an extra month before USA is this year so a lot of base right now I came off a really big injury last spring That's right. um, I had three stress reactions how does that happen I don't know I don't know I everything was going great making huge breakthroughs in the five and the ten and we were hoping for a world team last year and it was cool it was like the first time in the sport where I was like I get to have I can have those goals and yeah and then now it's just been building since then just getting healthy doing everything right and the goal's still the same but yeah sometimes you have to adjust sometimes you have to be patient Budapest seems like a fun place to yeah, go right? like that's you've what, been to Eugene that's yeah. what Mark said Mark was like you know what you you know what Eugene's about. You know what you missed out yeah. on. It's yeah, fine. It's like, not that big of a deal. <laughs> no more wild duck anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. That's Sad. True. <laughs> that's where you meet people that you accidentally follow on Instagram. Yeah, that that's, is. That's, <laughs> that's when the follow happens. <laughs> actually, is. is the like 2 a.m. like, oh, yeah, yeah, let me get, let me follow you. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be hit in the morning here. Like, why did I follow so many people last night? <laughs> Who is this yeah. person? <laughs> the, the walk home. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I have game. done that a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, do we know when we're going to see you race and really open up here? That is a good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <What's> I just <laughs> thought of it. <laughs> I, um, 
Um, I would love to run like the BAA 5K. Oh, cool. Um, get in that Easy. a little bit. I need to Down run 10 um, yeah. at some point. It's it's hard because the 10 would have been a great opportunity, but I, my body just wasn't ready. And I feel like there will be opportunities. I feel like there are, people are going to have to race it again this year. Um, Might have to travel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, like it's very loose, but we know like you need to get in a 10 and you got to time it out enough time from USA's and then um, a, a 5k on the track outdoors would be great. Um, where? I don't know yet. Um, this is what the coffee cup guys are talking about. Yeah, just how like the 10k is just so challenging. You have to build your whole year around it. Just it's like to hard. Train. It's hard too because I know World Athletics is shifting towards a point system and yeah. that is cool and it's really really benefits to sprinters 800 meter 500 or 1500 meter runners but for the 10k you can only run so many yeah. you can't fill your season up with them and um yeah you uh really have to time it out properly and you get to the roads and the, and the standard just keeps getting faster <laughs> yeah. i'm like come on <laughs> come on <laughs> but yeah it's exciting it's like women's distance running is just keeps getting better and that's really cool and it's so cool to see people rise to the occasion like wow where's the limit yeah yeah I guess we'll find bag. out soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. The high school kids keep, they're the ones raising oh the bar. Yeah. I think that everyone is like talking about why everyone's getting faster and it's the spikes. I'm not discounting any of that. But I think ultimately it's like, well, now the fast high school kids from a few years ago are the <laughs> adult pros. And it's like, yeah, what do you think is going to happen? Makes sense. Like if we have all of these guys breaking four minutes a mile when they're 16, 17 years old, well, like, they grow up. <laughs> Something happens to them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't disappear. Yeah. yeah. That's just the way time works. Yep. Yeah. Well, Millie, we appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us. This is a blast, and we're looking forward to seeing you open up your outdoor season. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Have awesome. fun. <laughs> I think we're going to bring on the Girls 800 winner, yeah. Allie Ince. Oh, and we're going to be able to break down the race. And what we have here, our track pad. There you go. <laughs> All right, Allie. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you. How are you feeling after that? Pretty great. Yeah, that was an awesome atmosphere. So New Balance National Champion in the Girls 800. How's that title feel? Feels pretty great. I uh, knew coming in that there was just gonna be great girls, and then that start when the lights went off and the pacing lights kind of went crazy. That was awesome. Just got you in the mood, ready to race. So um, knew it was gonna be a special day to go out there and compete hard. Have you ever like had to deal with that adrenaline beforehand? I mean, I can only imagine how exciting that was to hear the crowd going crazy, seeing the lights and all eyes suddenly on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely been big races. I'd say this is one of the biggest meets I've ever been at, um, for sure. It's a great scene. And so, um, honestly, just like with attention and knowing that there's great competition, kind of just gets you ready to go and makes it, I feel like a little more easier to race hard. Did you know coming in that 204 was in the cards today? Yeah, we had the pacing lights going through at one flat for the 400 and then um, coming back at 64, so we had a set right at um, 204, but honestly, I didn't really focus at all on the pacing lights. There was, girls took it out fast, so had people to chase. This was awesome, so didn't really have to worry about the pace, just had to run off the field and compete. What have you made of just kind of like the high school girls 800 scene over the last couple of years? Last year, we saw Juliet and Roisin do their thing, and you know, they're, they're, you know, crushing it at the NCAA level now. And so you're a part of just kind of this generation of, of stars. Yeah, the 800 in recent years has just been crazy. And I was so fortunate to get to know Julia and Rose Sheen. And I think what's so special about the 800 and honestly just in track in general is how people mentor one another and are so um, kind to the up and coming classes. And I think that's why people continue to get better because we're constantly getting, you know, knowledge from people who are older than us. And so just so thankful for the running community and people who um, just give feedback and advice and share their knowledge. Now, are you a senior? I'm a junior. You're a junior. Okay. Yep. So you're only just starting the whole college process. Yeah, just and, starting. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, well, we have the race here that we would love to watch with you and okay. kind of have you commentate Walk us through what's right. going on, different points. Take us inside your mind, I guess. All right, here. it sounds good.
All right, so the race gets off to right from the line. Where, how are you, you know, figuring out your position here? Yeah, so the pacer was right in the inside, so just kind of knew I had to get out fast and get the, secure the position right behind her. And so there's a little bumping right there, but just had to make sure we got in right behind her. And then just kind of, I saw the other girl in lane one had took off. So I knew I was like, okay, we got to get going. And we were coming through pretty fast, wanted to be around 30. So I think I went through around 30, 31. Um, Girls in front a little faster, so then right here just kind of had to start making up some ground and yeah, this is ye where are you? Is this you right here? E right, yeah, I think I'm here? right in front of that girl. Yeah, That's yep, you right, right there. there. All right, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of distance there between you and the pace. Uh -huh. Are you concerned in any way? Ah, uh, I definitely knew that they were gonna they were speeding up, so I was like, I can't sit back too much. I gotta get going right now. So I think I waited until this curve and then started to make my move. I didn't want to make it on the curve because. I didn't want to waste some distance. So right here, I think I passed the pacer and then just kind of was going to slowly make my way up on the straightaway. When you make that pass, you want to make it quite definitively, it looks like. Yeah. Tuck right back in. Yeah, I guess I waited and then I kind of went on this straightaway. Yeah, so right here, I was just kind of like, I think there was like a little over, like maybe 300 meters left. So I was like, all right, time to go. Just got to... Got out the rest, no slowing down now. How much does this hurt at this point? It hurts, but it's also exciting because every step you're getting closer to the finish line and coming through with 200 to go, you can see like it's gonna be a pretty good time. You just gotta keep going for one for one more lap. Come through in 132. Have you seen that time before? Is that a familiar spot? Mm -hmm, yeah, I've definitely seen, I think, 132 before, maybe 130, but the thing is like I struggled sophomore year then freshman year closing pretty hard um so i think the endurance has finally built up a little bit more so it's more of just a consistent three laps are you aware of this gap <laughs> right here on like, the board do you know that you've got it made the last like coming through like the last 100 i was looking on the big board and i saw a little bit of a gap but was didn't know how accurate it was so i just kept pushing but no that's I, isabel right behind you right yeah she killed it she had an awesome time there you are. How good does that feel to break that tape? It felt, felt really good. Coming down that last final stretch was pretty rewarding. And now where do we go from here? I mean, you're, you're the New Balance Nationals champion. You just ran 204. What's next? Well, we got the mile tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited. Great competition. Just going to sit in that group and um, a good time's going to hopefully come. And um, so that's really exciting. And then from here on out, um, got some meets with my team so I think we'll get a few 400s in and just kind of build the speed back up for the 800 and mile and just kind of have fun with the 4x4 four four and so yeah. How much confidence does that give you to know that racing a group of milers tomorrow that you've got a 204 in you? Yeah it gives pretty good confidence for that closing 400 to know that I, I got some speed in me but um, they'll all have speed in them too so it'll be a fun race we'll see what happens but just overall so excited and then after the race you got to meet two olympians and oh my gosh Adam yes Coburn and Corey mcgee what was that like that was just crazy that was awesome like a dream come true such um just idol them like they're amazing i feel like everyone looks up to them so um just crazy to get to meet them it was awesome well, Allison, I guess we'll let you get to your cool down and, and really properly celebrate with your team and your family and friends. So thanks for thanks for coming on our show. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Congrats. All right, Kyle. I think that might be it for us here. Day, Saturday, New Balance Nationals. What have you made of the day? I mean, it was just nonstop action this yeah, evening. It's been guts. unbelievable. Um, it's Highlight of the day. Highlight of the day. Quincy? Yeah, Quincy. Yeah. <laughs> His interview is phenomenal. I'm so glad we got to speak with him after. And, uh, you know, just having had the opportunity to hear from him earlier in the week, you got to root for him. Like, we knew. I was invested. We knew the type of guy he was. We knew the, some of the story. Did and the now, like, I don't want to put too much pressure on a 15-year-old kid, but, like, now I'm like, is this the future? <laughs> <laughs> a 15 year old running 46.6 indoors is like that's generational that's unbelievable it's it, it gets you really excited and i guess like i uh, you know we haven't done our this week in track and field podcast this week because we were you know working here but by my buy for this week i'm buying quincy uh wilson stock right now no this was super fun and just 
I mean, as a, a side note, seeing the athletes and having an opportunity to get to know them and talk to them, see yeah. their excitement, see their excitement in meeting the professional athletes, like that's the highlight. That's my favorite thing about here. I think what we ultimately are always trying to do is how do we bridge that gap? How do we get the 6,000 kids that are here running to follow the legits and the professionals and really become like life? Long fans of the sport just like us just like us lifers and I think those little interactions and the opportunity to get an autograph and a picture goes a really long way into buying in all right well we got to go and give some people our autographs yes the long line <laughs> there's a long line of people <laughs> waiting for us hey everyone well thanks for tuning in to after the final lap here on the city of smack YouTube channel we will catch you guys again tomorrow be sure to subscribe to our channel follow us on all our social platforms as we're keeping you updated with uh, you know we've got reels from the finish line we got photos and graphics and records are falling left and right so be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with everything I'm Chris Chavez this is Kyle Merber I love track and field love track and field